Hello and welcome to Ragtime Tavern Spinning Baby Grand Initiative. I'm Dokas Mapakela and I am your host. Previously, we've been able to introduce you to some incredible Melbourne-based musicians and it is with immense gratitude to Creative Victoria that we are able to continue to introduce you to these amazing artists. And with that said, let's go and meet my first guest. There's a place I know You just gotta go It's happening almost every night Piano in the center of a custom-built bar Ragtime Tavern, you're a shining star Ragtime Tavern, spinning baby grand A night to remember with the drink in your hand Why well, could go wrong when everything's right Get to Ragtime Tavern tonight And now I am joined by the Ezra Lee Review. Guys, welcome. Great to be here. Good to be here. Great to have you. Can I get you guys to introduce yourselves and sure. tell us a little bit about who you are? Well, my name's Ezra Lee and I play piano and sing in this lineup. And we've got Mr. Matt Dwyer here on the guitar. He sings in the lineup as well. And Mr. Peter J. Mav on the double bass. Hello. It's Hello. great to have these guys here. We're just missing one member, which is the drummer. But we're, we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Great we'll to have the there. three of you. Amazing. And and just just before we went live, you said you know we were talking about the review and the band. Do you want to tell me a little bit about that? Because sure. So well, it's uh, it, not many bands call themselves that anymore. But review is uh, very popular in the '40s with the R&B scene. Uh, it just means band. So it's just a, f a fancy way to say that, really. Fancy because you guys are just so fancy. Well, just yeah, not, try. Try. not trying. You try. You do a great humble, job. But. You do a mm -hmm. great job. Um, and can you just tell me about you know the your journey as musicians and you know as a as a group working together? Okay, sure. Do you mind if I fill that one? Go for it. I've been playing uh, for years in different bands: uh, Johnny Green's Blues Cowboys and Tori Rand and some of these guys. Uh, and lately, I've met up with Matt Dwyer here uh, since I moved to Melbourne and Peter here and we just joined a band together and these guys have got their own thing going on oh. Matt Dwyer and the Magnetones and it was just a perfect fit perfect fit and, and, and you know I mean I read your bio there's a lot of highlights on there if you can give us three what you know what are some of the most amazing moments and, and I'd love to hear also from you guys you know what are some of those great moments that you've come across along your journey sure well uh, just being in the Blues Cowboys was uh around great musicians, you know, and uh, I also back Jerry Lee Lewis and Wanda Jackson. So there's your three. There's your three, top three. Right there, Smash. my friend. Now, hey, can we, we ask these guys? <laughs> yes. Uh, oh. Top that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just. <laughs> Don't think I can. Um, one of the coolest gigs I ever did once was uh, opening for Charlie Musselwhite, because he played on a lot of records that I really loved, and it was great to meet him in the flesh. And he was a gent. Um, meeting Sting, was really cool. Um, got to talk to him about music a lot, and he's one of those guys you can just learn about music just from a normal conversation. That was pretty cool. And the other highlight is just still going on, just um, playing music. And playing music has got me halfway around the world, playing all over Southeast Asia and the Middle East and New Zealand and what have you. And I love to travel. So playing and traveling are two of my favorite things. Well, um, what can I say? I can't even. I'm, Believe it or not, I can't think of highlights like for over the years because my memory isn't fantastic. But it is a highlight playing with Ezra Lee. I'm going to say that because, uh, you know, I've recently joined the band and I'm extremely happy and extremely excited about that. It's awesome. Amazing. Good things yeah, for the mate. future, my friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, look, I'll name another highlight while I'm sitting next to Matt. I've been playing with Matt for about seven years now. And, uh, you know, we've had our ups and downs. But uh, I think that's a great thing to be in a band and, and you know, go through the ups and downs together. Yeah, brilliant. I love it. Mm. So you guys are also going to do a little performance for us. So do you want to tell me about the songs that you're going to be playing for us? Sure. I'm going to do a little tune. This one's called The Rock and Roll Piano Man. And it's about my flashy playing. All the sort of stuff that goes along with, uh, with great rock and roll music. The red suit, feet on the piano, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Loving it. And we've also got Matt going to do a song. That's right, I'm gonna do a song that I wrote called Tell Me. 
and uh, it was just a song that I wrote very quickly. I was seeing somebody and she was mad at me and I couldn't figure out why and I was supposed to know. And uh, yeah, that's right, that's right. And it's like, and you know, you try, yeah, try and fix things. It's like, what's wrong? And it's like, you should know. So I, I just wrote this song in about 10 minutes. It's just called Tell Me. Did she tell you? Got straight to that. Eventually, yes. <laughs> 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 no songs about that, though. I, I'm a guy, yeah, you know. We, yeah. I, I don't, you know, guys aren't good at subtlety and hints yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Just, you know. Tell me. Tell just it. be straight up. Straight up. That's it. Amazing. Looking mm. forward to the performance. So, thanks, guys, for sitting down with me and you know sharing with us about your music. Pleasure. Great to meet you, and thanks for having us. <laughs> until now but yeah. that wasn't a problem because this is your home right yeah <laughs> this place is so comfortable yeah I know I know um, well thank you for you know coming to sit next to me um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your practice as an artist well um, yeah I I'm I play the piano and I've been playing piano for like 20 years now um, very long time, you know. I started playing in, well, I'm just, I'm, I don't know when I started playing. I think, you know, six ish or something, something yeah. like that. But, um, yeah, always, I've always been, I've been surrounded by the music all my life. So I've just been, it's been a part of me and then joining notes with the piano to the 
hands to the, the fingers thing, the um, just was the obvious way to go yeah because you you know you, like you said music has just been your thing because mm-hmm. your parents you know yeah, you've yeah, been my, gigging quite early in your that's life that's right yeah so yeah my, my parents they, they were gigging as I was growing up and mm-hmm. I'd go watch them play perform all the time in fact um, you know um, me, and, me and my mum we had a gig here last week um, and every song on the set list I knew every song I knew every song because you know I grew up watching her perform the same set of music yeah. um, and that's yeah so I knew all those songs from my childhood way like, back when yeah like oh what about this song oh I haven't sung that one in years Oscar you know oh that's nice mm. you know talking about the piano you're gonna play something absolutely tell us about that um well you know I I'm not I, I was planning to play and I've got a couple songs that I was gonna play and have changed over the course of the day due to due to um what I could have done you know? mm-hmm. almost I almost got my band in to play but um that didn't happen um, so I think I'll play a different song mm-hmm. um, which one did you pick oh. Or are you changing as we're speaking? I'm changing right? as I we're feel speaking. Like you're, you know? you're yeah, um, a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm probably um, I'm probably going to play a song called Train Wreck, mm-hmm. which is uh, sort of a Latin um, pseudo pseudo Latin bossa nova piece. No, not bossa. Pseudo Latin jazz contemporary jazz piece. That um, I mean, I wrote the piece and the name came from a local that comes here. We hang, we hang out a lot told me a story and it was like about a train that crashed near him. It's like, cool, that's the name of my song. That's the one? Mm-hmm. Amazing. Um, well, let's hear it. Yeah. Let's go. Thank you for sitting with me and um, I look forward to your song. No worries. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you.
And now I am joined by Bryson. Welcome to my little corner. How are you? Thank you, Dorcas. Quite well, thank you. That's great. Thank you for jumping on board so quickly. My pleasure. It's great, yeah. to, great to be at the ragtime. At the ragtime, I know. Now tell me a little bit about yourself and your practice as a musician. Okay, I am a songwriter, a pianist and a singer. And before that, I was a conga player and a flautist. And I guess I got into piano because I wanted to write songs. This is a bit hard on congas and flute. And I also work in children's theatre, mm -hmm. um, running a band called the Bongo Brothers. And we tour schools. And yeah, that kind of, I'm lucky because that helps me to provide an income as an artist to fund my piano exploits. Yeah, yeah. so I've made, um, I also run a trio called mm -hmm. under the, the name Glory B. And we've put three albums out over the last, say, 12 years. Our fourth is about to drop. Ooh. And I've also, within COVID time, I got a chance to um, build a little home studio and just mess around and record some songs. And I've got a new producer, Nick Eden, um, very good producer. He's a, a new producer for me. He loves these recordings I've done and he's basically says, let's make this an album, which will be my first release under my own name, Bryson mm. Mulholland. So I've got a few little projects kind of yeah, just involved happening, simmering, happening. yeah, ready. So yeah, it's been good. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and and you're going to play for us. Yeah, today, a little right? song. Little yeah, song tell out. us about this song. I was umming and ahhing which song I was going to play. Um, I've decided to go for a song which is the title track of my last album that I put out called "Standing at the Door," and it is. Probably the only self-portrait track that I have ever written. Usually it's about someone else or something else. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of like a self-portrait. And um, I guess the story goes, you know, um, there's a person standing at the door. Do they go in mm -hmm. or do they stand at the door? or do they not go in? And then eventually this person finds himself by himself with nothing else just to look at himself. Oh, deep. That's very <laughs> deep. <laughs> but that's exciting. I'm, I'm, yeah. I can't wait to, to, to hear you play. So thank, thank you, you so much. I hope you enjoy. I will. I'm pretty sure I will. So yeah, thank you for sharing with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.
turned up like a man Create the best of plans Know where you go joined by the gorgeous ladies Alex and Teresa. Hi ladies, how Hi. are you? Good, how Hi. are you? I'm very well, yeah. thank you for coming to my little corner. Thanks for having thank us. You. It's a pleasure. I'm going to hand it over to you and let you introduce yourselves properly and tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Alex, I'm a pianist um, and I play mostly for opera and music theatre companies and this is my roommate and good friend Teresa. Yes, and we met during a Masters of Opera mm -hmm. together at Melbourne University. Um, and so I'm a, obviously a, a classical singer um, and uh, soprano, and I've been doing it now for five to ten years. Um, and really, we're just venturing out into the world this year after studying, so yeah. yeah. Oh, cool, because I was going to ask you, you know, do you, because you know as an artist or as a musician, you like kind of put it on the side and you're like yeah um, I sing or whatever do you guys call yourselves professional musicians um yeah so yeah. actually all of my work at the moment is in the music industry so it's really nice actually to see yeah. that since COVID we've managed to bounce back yeah and yeah. have opportunities and theatre companies open back up which is always really lovely nice. yeah for me it's um a secondary career so mm -hmm. I've got a career in design and content strategy um, that pays for my singing. Yes, <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's a bit of an obsession slash passion. Um, I wouldn't say it's a project because I, I do consider myself like content strategist by day, singer by night. So um, it's really a part of me and I hope for it to be a bigger, bigger chunk of my time. So yeah. and what was what was it like for you guys during the pandemic and the restrictions. I mean, you live together, so yeah. um, was we it like actually, singing all the time? We or? actually didn't live together during oh, the quite lockdown. recent. So yeah. I moved in after the lockdown because right. I wanted to get away from my lockdown housemates. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not watching. <laughs> Love you, Andrew. <laughs> um, but yeah, COVID was interesting because like within in March, within three days, I'd lost all my work for the whole year. Mm. Um, but I was also very fortunate that I was at uni, right. so I actually had something to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And very not go insane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about Yeah, you? Um, so I, yeah, I had uni as well. Um, I worked part-time um, in content strategy, so oh. um, I 
I didn't have any issue losing work from music because I wasn't making any money from music anyway. Yeah. So, um, so it's really, um, however, my housemate, um, our other housemate, um, Lizette and I, um, co-founded this thing called Balcony Opera, which we started oh. performing to our neighbors every Sunday and it became a bit of a, a thing. It got into the age and all these oh, wow. other new- newspaper and we were on the today, uh, was it sunrise we were on sunrise um and alex has also participated in um balcony opera now and so yeah we did a christmas show and um we haven't done anything this year but oh i was gonna go so is is it a thing i think it will be yeah it sounds like a thing it's, it's coming where we're kind of deciding what it's gonna be so oh amazing yeah so, so did people just like come out and just watch and... yeah we had like a group of seven units and so everyone came out on their balconies when it was the proper lockdown where we couldn't yeah. actually leave our house um, and then other times it was people just massing in the driveway, um, socially distanced, of course, of course uh, safely <laughs> with masks and everything. Uh, but it was a really wonderful community builder. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and talking about that, you guys are going to do a little performance for us. Do you want to tell us about it? Call it? So I'm jealous because <laughs> about essentially this aria happens towards the end of the opera. And Swar Angelica, who had a child and the child was taken away at, from her at birth, she has found out that her child is now dead. And she is mourning the child and saying, you know, I never got to tell you how much I loved you and you died all alone. And yeah, so it's pretty sad, actually. <laughs> it's a very sad hour. Yeah. 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 But we look forward to it. I'm sure it'll be performed so beautifully that we won't be that sad. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah, so. well thank you ladies yeah. for sitting down with me and I'm excited to see what you're going to perform. Thanks thank so you. much for having us. Thank you.
I designed and built Ragtime Tavern. Uh, I built it uh, because I really enjoy having a bar and having a music bar where people can come and play and people mingle and get involved in the music and I just enjoy the whole, uh, the whole concept of live music being exposed to somebody who's worked hard on their craft and then they perform and take you out of uh, your everyday life. And, uh, I also built the bar because I really enjoy being part of the community that I live in and I feel like that uh, when you have a bar and you build a business in the local area that you really do immerse yourself in the community, get to know people and um, have a really good time. There's a place I know you just gotta go It's happening almost every night Piano in the center of a custom built bar Ragtime Tavern, you're a shining star Ragtime Tavern, spinning baby grind A night to remember with the drink in your hand What could go wrong when everything's right? Get to Ragtime Tavern tonight